Hello everyone, so I thought today I would make a little bonus video to make up for a few weeks that I missed in August and I wanted to talk about swimming when you are a pre-op trans man. I developed a pretty bad back injury kind of right from the start of my transition so I've not really been able to work out the way I've wanted to but one thing that has been helping me a lot was to swim. Swimming was kind of one of those things that I wasn't that keen on obviously as a trans man who has not had top surgery yet it's not the easiest thing in the world to do and it comes with a lot of insecurity and just a lot of anxiety and being scared of what it's actually going to be like. My first experience was at the seaside in Italy in Sorrento with my friends and since then I've been swimming a lot more at pool so I feel like I've kind of got a little bit of experience as to what it's like and the best things to do. So first if we cover the whole chest aspect of things, I wear a binder to swim. I do not swim in a swimming binder, which is what you're meant to really do. I've not even really looked into buying one. I don't think there's a point if I'm going to have be having surgery soon because it's a lot of money. But I will link down below the very well-known one from Underworks. And that, I think that's the only swimming binder that I have actually heard of. And apparently it's quite good, but I've got absolutely zero experience with it myself. If I find a review or something that I think is particularly good on YouTube, I will also link it down below. So for those of you that are interested, you can watch it. What I've been personally doing is I have been swimming in just a normal binder. Uh, it's not exactly a normal binder because I got a binder that was a size too big and then that way it wouldn't feel as constricting with swimming. Um, I've not actually tried to swim in my normal size binder but neither would I really want to. I've got a binder which is one of the nude binders from GC2B which I will also link down below and the skin colour doesn't match me perfectly but it matches me quite well. In that I don't feel too constricted. I did obviously notice it was a lot harder for me to swim with a binder than it was the times that I did without when I was younger and stuff. I couldn't do as many laps but I could swim and I could swim with kind of minimal dysphoria. It was all right, basically. I try not to think about it, and I try not to think about what other people were thinking of. The way I said it to a friend was that if people know what binding is, they're not gonna be a dick about you binding at the pool, and then if someone doesn't know what binding is, what you're wearing is probably just gonna look like a medical brace or something, or they just won't care. A lot of people who go swimming just go swimming for themselves and not to stare at other people and what they look like. I have a whole video about binding positivity anyway that I made a little while back, which I will also link down below, um, as I think being positive where about wearing a binder will help swimming in one so much more and really it just doesn't look as weird as you think. I know one thing people do is that they will wear a bigger binder like I do and then they'll wear a rash guard on top and I think that's a really good idea. I was going to do it but I'm not that bothered. I'm quite confident with wearing a binder out in public and people seeing it so I feel like that's alright. But if you don't feel like that's going to work for you and you don't want people to see that you're wearing a binder then a rash guard might be a good one which is like a swim top or something. Uh, very easily found on websites like Amazon and stuff. So that's what I do in terms of my chest. In terms of what I wear on the lower half of my body, I wear swim shorts, just any basic old swim shorts that I have. I have three pairs, so whichever one I feel like wearing on the day. Um, and I do pack when I swim. Some people don't, some people do. Um, I personally prefer to, it helps me a lot with my dysphoria, um, especially because wet swim trunks can really cling to your body and I'd feel like I wouldn't want that to happen without wearing a packer. So I normally wear my Freeton Body STP, which is my smaller STP. I actually don't wear it for anything else but that because I don't really like that one as much as my Freeton Sleek and I don't see a point of wearing it. But it's good for the pool and it means that when I go to the cubicles to pee when I want to, I can pee with an STP because I just, yeah, I prefer to pee standing up at a pool um, than doing the hover. So I'll wear a packer, with that packer I have the drop strap to keep it in place. I'll then wear a pair of boxes that I'm not that keen on, so I have this one that I'm kind of wearing on rotation at the moment, and then I'll wear the swim shorts on top. So it's quite a few layers, quite a lot going on, but make sure everything stays in place, it's nice and snug, and also makes me feel good about myself. So when you're going swimming, you can't just think about what you're going to be wearing at the time, you also have to think about what you're going to wear after. So always remember a spare binder, that's really, really important, because um, obviously you're not going to want to walk around in your wet binder, uh, so yeah, they don't dry that fast, trust me. It will be really difficult to put the second binder on when you're wet, so you will have to towel dry for quite a while to get to a point where you'll be able to put another binder on, uh, but I'm sure you've probably experienced that after showers and stuff anyway. But wait, yeah, also take a lot of caution when taking off a wet binder because that's also not that easy. I don't really have any tips, but just take it slowly. And usually if you're wearing a, bigger, a binder that's bigger anyway, um, it should be easy for you to take it off. I also bring a spare jock strap because that's what I use as a harness for my packers. And I usually bring a different packer just so that I can clean the chlorine off 
of the one that I was wearing at the pool. And like I said, the free tone body I only really wear at the pool, I don't really pack with it outside. So I bring a spare packer, uh, which I guess is a bit extra, but that's personally for me, uh, a spare jock strap, obviously underwear to wear, and all of my other clothes. So that's what I do. I've been swimming a lot lately, and that's been working for me. Uh, I haven't really had any issues. I had one, one of, like, dickhead, lifeguard, but I reported him to reception and not had any problems since. So on a general note, everything's fine. People don't stare or anything. Like I said, people just... They just don't care. So let me know in the comments how your swimming goes. Uh, let me know if you do anything else as a pre-op trans man to make swimming a little bit easier, as I think that'll be really cool to see what everyone else does as well. I've got a friend who's post-op. I swim with him quite a lot, and we're considering doing a little video about maybe swimming post-op as well, so if you'd like that, also let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching today. Like I said, leave a comment. Please do like the video if you liked it. Uh, subscribe, and I will see you all next time.